Alrighty, so no, oh, sorry, no homework. There's no homework. That's just left over from last time. No homework, and the date is also wrong. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, uh, Atomic Habits. So I, I uh, read your uh, reactions. Uh, seems like the general consensus was uh, looks promising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you reading it together? Right um, no. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna start a new thing. Uh, at the end of each chapter, he has a chapter summary with bullet points. So I'm gonna go over his chapter summary for each chapter for you guys and then give you little tidbits. Okay, you're not gonna read the whole thing. If you wanna read the whole thing, go ahead and buy the book. But like, I only had the PDF of that one thing because it was a free sample. Mm -hmm. So this is just, just, just for your own knowledge and for Chuva and all this other stuff. Okay, so uh, you don't have to take notes on this or anything like that, uh, unless you think it's helpful. So he, said, he defines a habit as a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. So automatic is the key feature of a habit. Uh, the ultimate purpose of habits is to solve the problems of life with as little energy and effort as possible. I thought that was a very interesting insight. Yeah, yeah. Does this remind you of anything that we maybe learned in study skills? The late definition of laziness. Definition of laziness, yeah. right? Yeah. Sadi Gohan's definition of laziness in Michele. Anyone remember what it is? Avoid all immediate, immediate pain and punishment. Uh, and conflict, yeah. And right, okay, good. The, uh, the compulsive need to avoid all immediate pain and conflict. So habits are something that are designed like by the human psyche, not designed obviously by Hashem, but like, you know, their purpose is to help you to avoid uh, conflict. Okay. Um, and to, it, so really, if you want to be lazy, what should you do? Make a habit. Because right. then what happens is you don't have to think about stuff and you just do it automatically. Okay. And I think this is something that he talks about this a little bit in the chapter that, um, you look at people who, I'm sure you all know people who are like very um, disciplined and organized, and you think that they have more self-control than other people. So he, the point that he makes is he says, really, I mean, of course they have self-control, but they really are, are offloading things to habits so they don't have to think about stuff, you know? So that's an interesting perspective that like habits serve your laziness and will actually like take away the need for you to think about stuff and invest energy in, in doing things. But the, the establishing of the habit, that's the hard part. Like a rabbi, like not a rabbi, like a righteous person. Yeah. Like you say it's, it's, it's like some habit. Oh, that's like the idea of like a ladder type of thing where every person has their own things with their habits and things that they have to like I'm not familiar with the specific analogy you're using, but it sounds good. <laughs> it sounds, it sound, yeah, it sounds good. And, uh, and, um, and I would agree with you that like people who are righteous have done a good job at cultivating uh, habits of goodness and habits of truth and stuff like that and keeping them going, you know? At the moment, they're not working so hard on them. Yes, exactly. Like, let's say, for example, um, if you, this is kind of a personal question, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll use an example for me, okay? Is uh, when I first came to New York, okay, back up. Outside of New York, you don't have a lot of Jewish poor people going around collecting money, you know? Whereas in New York, it's a very common thing of like a neem coming around and like, you know, or like outside of the grocery store or whatever. So when I first came to New York, I was very uncomfortable with, uh, with like interacting with people like that because I'd never had that before. And like, I'm, you know, it's not people who are, you know, in, in, in that socioeconomic state are not part, were not part of my life. So when I was in yeshiva, I, I took on the job of being in charge of giving tzedakah so that it would force me to interact with people like that. And what that did is like, it was awkward at first, but then it ended up just becoming a natural thing that I, there's no resistance. And I just do, it, you know, I just am able to do it without any like internal opposition, you know? So that, that would be an example of when I first started off, I needed to consciously like battle myself to get to do it. And then it became a, a positive habit that, that stuck. But what we learned from the Rambam is when we say that the positive habit sticks, that's only if, if you keep on practicing it, right? And if not, then it could go back. Okay, now he gets to his main insight. Any habit can be broken down into a feedback loop that involves four steps. Cue, craving, response, and reward. Can you read the exact book, please? Yeah, this is word for word from his book. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is at the end of chapter three. So chapter one is what I gave oh. you. I was like, I don't yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, but if you look in there, I think he also has bullet points at the end for that yeah, chapter. Okay. Chapter two was basically what I summarized for you uh, last time we had Pierre Avos with identity becoming a big thing for habits, and then this is chapter three. So here's a bunch of examples, okay? I'm sorry, it's kind of small. I just took a picture of the page. So, oh, and you can't even let me move this. Okay, cue, craving, response, and reward. So cue, your phone buzzes with a new text message. 
Craving, you want to learn the contents of the message. Response, you grab your phone and read the text. Your reward, you satisfy your craving to read the message. And then here's the key part here. Uh, hold on. Grabbing your phone becomes associated with your phone buzzing. It shortcuts all of them. Okay. Two, uh, next example. You are answering emails. You begin to feel stressed and overwhelmed by work. You want to feel in control. That's the craving. Three, response, you bite your nails. Okay. Um, now, uh, I, I've never had to have a biting nails, but like, it's been so good. I yeah. Even cut them. Yeah. I'm, I'm so do, do, do you, yeah. and now people bite nails for different reasons. Do any of you identify with this of like, when you feel overwhelmed or stressed? Yeah. Cause for, I think for some people it's boredom. It's yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. I mean, to me it sounds like boring, literally. Okay. So maybe we can work on, uh, on, uh, on how to change it. You satisfy your craving to reduce stress. Biting your nails becomes associated with answering email, right? Do you see, that's what he means by feedback loop, feedback loop is each step yeah, becomes necessary for the next one. Well, like when I watch scary shows, so now yeah, like Pavlov. Like yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you wake up, you want to feel, so that's the cue, right? Is the thing, the cue is the thing that starts off the chain. Okay. Then that triggers a craving. You want to feel alert. What's the response? You, you drink a cup of coffee. The reward is you satisfy your craving to feel alert. Drinking coffee becomes associated with waking up. Uh, another, another one, you smell a donut shop as you walk down the street near your office. Craving, you begin to crave a donut. Three, response, you buy a donut and eat it. Four, reward, you're, you satisfy your craving to eat a donut. Buying a donut becomes associated with, yeah, probably, with walking down the street near the office, not waking up in the morning. That'd be, uh, that'd be even, even uh, worse, yeah. Uh, Sorry, hold on. More examples. Uh, you hit a stumbling block on a project at work, craving. You feel stuck and want to relieve your frustration. Three, uh, you pull out your phone and check social media. Four, you satisfy your craving to feel relieved. Checking social media becomes associated with feeling stalled at work. I'm sure you can relate to this with homework, yeah. right? Exactly, okay. Uh, you walk into a dark room. You want to be able to see. You flip the light switch. You satisfy your craving to see. Turning on the light switch becomes associated with being in a dark room. See, now what, what's different about that example than all the other ones? That's already What was that? Not it's not negative, right? And in fact, I don't even think that we think of this as a habit, but it is. It's something we do without thinking automatically, right? It's dark, you want to see. And these four steps happen just like, like that, you know? So the reason why he introduces with this is the book is divided into four chapters, strategies that tackle the cue, strategies that tackle the craving, strategies that tackle the response, and strategies that tackle the reward. And this is his theory, okay? And this is, this is what we're going to do. Again, we're only going to do one chapter a day. The four laws of behavior change are a simple set of rules we can use to build better habits. They are make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. Habits? To build better habits and to and the reverse of this is to undo bad habits. So for example, if you want to undo a bad habit, what would be the example, uh, the opposite of make it obvious? Forget about make it, uh, yeah, make it hidden. Okay, opposite of number two? Make it, make it ugly, right? Make it distasteful. Uh, three, make it difficult. And four, yeah, make it dissatisfying or, or, or remove the satisfaction from it, right? So, so this, this is just an outline of what we're going to do for the next day or the, you know, the, you know, until like we finish the book is, uh, is we're going to start with, with strategies within number one, then two, then three, then four. Okay, so this is what I have in mind just for like a little tidbits here. Okay, any questions on this before we go on? All right, this is not, not like the main part of the lesson. All right, so now I wanted to share with you. So we have... Um, I don't know, anyone count how many sessions we have before uh, before we break for Sokus? It's not that many, right? Yeah, so this is, uh, I, I made a, a, a little meme to express um, how I feel every time of year. Um, <laughs> okay, I always feel like there is uh, tons and tons and st tons of stuff that like we have to cover before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, you know? And I always feel overwhelmed, never know exactly how to do it. So what I kind of want to do is I want to, I know we started Pirkei Avos and that's going to be the main thing of the year, but how would you feel about doing just Shuva topics in Hilvus Shuva, okay, from the Rambam? Did you guys learn Hilvus Shuva last year? Or are you learning it this year with anyone? No, okay. On Fridays, everyone decides to do that. Friday was a little intense. Yeah. yeah. Everyone did Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Yeah. Intense. Okay. I mean, that's kind of appropriate for this year. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, would uh, either one or both of you pass out the Rambams? 
the one volume Mishnah Torahs. Okay, I'm not going to distort each of this because we're going to be jumping around based on your questions. Yeah, those. I think there are nine. Uh, unless there are, yes, there are nine. So there's one for me also. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so. Yeah, oh, so this, uh, just a little, little background here, okay. Yes, uh, but what makes this Mishnah Torah special? Yes, Hashalim, which means it has everything, right? So, uh, Elisha, could you do me a favor? Point to the set of Mishnah Torah behind you that, uh, just so people can see the on the right, all those, right? So that's, those are all 14 books of the Mishnah Torah, so this is all of it in one. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it definitely looks more, no. more modern, yeah. <laughs> oh, is yours broken? <laughs> oh, uh, I know why. <laughs> because uh, for the whole summer, these were carried around in the, in the, in the back of my trunk. And uh, one of them fell out and was like sliding around on the bottom <laughs> whenever I drove. And so that, that's probably the one. If it's bothersome, we can, we can swap. Yeah, that's also why it looks battered, right? It's like, yeah, the poor, poor Ramam, yeah. my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Now, since we're going to be hopefully using these all year, um, I, I, let, let me just give a quick overview of the Mishnah Torah, okay? So it's written by the Ramam, okay? Approximately when did the Ramam live-ish? He was a Rishonim, one of the Rishonim. A uh, Ish. So I believe it was, I believe 1135... Till 1207, I believe. That's 35 till 1204. 1204? Okay. How do you know the Rambam, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, you have a timeline thing. Oh. Nice. From who? Mr. Bader. Oh, I would have guessed Mr. Bader. Uh, wait, can I see it? Yeah. No, no, it's not. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, maybe I'll ask her for a copy. I just want, I just want to fact check, though. No, not that I don't trust. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you're right, 1204. 1138, this one has 1138, what does that say? Yeah, I think that part is unknown, whether it's 35 or 38, okay. So Mishnah Torah was, I mean, he wrote a lot of books. Uh, Mishnah Torah that was his, uh, here's a new vocabulary, magnum opus. Oh, uh, yeah? It was like his greatest His greatest work, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good word to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, now, um, uh, what makes, what is the Mishnah Torah and what makes it so magnum, so big, so great? It is a compilation of all of the Mishnah. Yes, and... Yeah, well, we talked about this in Gemara also. By Organized by subject matter, and not just all the mitzvos, but all of the, I think you said it, I, all the halachos, okay? So it's the only, what did you say? Oh. <laughs> said a little weird. <laughs> yeah. So it is the only Sefer Halacha, which is halachos of all 613 mitzvos, um, organized by topic, okay? As opposed to the Shulchan Arach, which is which mitzvos and halachos? Practical? Uh, yes, but what do you mean by practical? Okay, day-to-day -day also. So as opposed to what, though? What doesn't the Shulchan Aruch include? Right, stuff that we don't do nowadays. Yeah. That you meant for practical? Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, right. Okay, so the Ram, though, has everything. Okay. Um, so if you'll turn in the Rambam to... Uh, so the first book is Sefer Hamada, which literally means... The book of the knowledge. Yeah, okay, right. Or uh, the people, some people translate as the science. And the last section is Hilgos Chuva, which is on page 147 in your edition. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, the second chapter, because the second chapter deals with Chuva. The first chapter deals with Vidui, which we would loosely translate as what's Vidui? Oh, 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 oh lamentation. No, you're thinking of oh, Kinos. Kinos, yeah. Oh, no, no. What do you say? Admitting, admitting. admitting yeah, admitting your, uh, that you, you did wrong or whatever. Uh, people translate it as a confession, right? However you want to translate it. So we're going to start with Hilos Chuva, but before we start, though, how do you translate the word Chuva? Returning, good, okay. How do most people translate the word Chuva? Repentance, right? So this is one of these cases where it's a little irritating because repentance and returning mean different things. Um, 
repentance does not really fit Judaism's definition so well. Um, return is better. Uh, and return to what? Yeah. Ah, okay, so you say Hashem, uh, you say reality, you say God's will. The target. Because I think it's about missing the target. Ooh. Yeah. I was going to ask you for referring to a specific year. It sounded like you were talking about a. a no, so, you know, our Russian package. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what they were all talking about. Yes. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. So all, all of your answers that you're giving are true. Uh, we're going to keep it as an open question because it depends on the framework. Okay. And so we'll, we'll uh, we might return to this later. Okay. For example, I mean, the example I give that is. Um, that uh, is kind of eye-opening is we are used to think of tshuva, used to think of tshuva as a good thing, right? But in Tanakh, it also, so we, we, how would you say return to Hashem? Like what's the phrase in Hebrew that people say? El Hashem, right? Or Ad Hashem, okay? Um, or tshuva Lashem, mm. okay? So in Tanakh though, it also uses the phrase uh, Vishavtim me'achare Hashem returning away from Hashem. Oh, yeah, with the bad thing. Yes, right, yeah. So uh, so it's also used for bad. Obviously not as frequently as we use it for good because we talk about it for good much more. But that kind of throws a question in here about like, well, if it, it, the word to return can't be exclusively to Hashem because then how could you use it for bad, you know? So let's keep that in mind. Uh, now, how would you define tshuva? Not translate, but define. Like, what does tshuva involve? Okay, changing your mindset. Changing your actions based on your mindset. Changing your actions, good. If someone said, how do I do tshuva, what would you, uh, what, how would you answer the question? Okay, introspection. Well, you want to say all these steps. Yeah, is there an order? Do, do you have like uh, steps in mind? Well, for the ones that the target is about how first you admit what you did wrong, then you say that you repent and don't do it again, you come up with a plan. Okay, so you say first you admit what you did wrong, then you. Then you say identify something that was wrong and then you already change it and set a goal. Okay. And then you say you won't do it. Oh, see, okay, good. So you, you guys, you are aware that there are steps, but the question is how do you define each step and what order are they in and why are they in that order? That's kind of what we're going to uh, focus on today, yeah. Again, you got the right steps, but we have to see about the order. And I should preface this, by the way, that assume that everything we're learning here is according to who? The Rama. the Rama, right? So there are there are machlo, there's you know machlokas here, right? So, okay. Um, so uh, oh, so I, I, that was what you say. Okay. Oh, I also wanted to show you that the word repent is not um, uh, is not a good word for tshuva. So Google defines repent as feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. Yeah. So what's missing? The action. The action, right? Okay. So the word repent doesn't uh, doesn't actually even refer to the action according to the definition. And then the shoresh. Uh, this is from the Etymological Dictionary. Uh, it means to feel such regret for sins or crimes as produces amendment of life. So I guess the original meaning does lead to change. Okay, amendment is change. Uh, but it's from the old French repentir, uh, blah, 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 to make sorry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, so I, I just want to show this to, to show that the essence of it is feeling sorry about it, which is part of tshuva, but that's not the whole, whole uh, you know, uh, essence of tshuva. Okay, so let's... We did that already. Okay, hold on. I actually included that twice. Okay, so let's read. Okay, uh, this is in Rambam. Uh, what page did I say? I just closed my Rambam. 147? 147. Yeah. Um, so, would someone like to read and translate Halacha Aleph? Go ahead. Is it Park Bet in mind? Yes. Okay. Is it What is a complete return? Good. When a matter comes into one's hands, a matter that he has passed over, and he is able to, in his hands, do it. Yeah, so um, I translated it. I mean, you got a good translation here, but the a thing that he, when you, a person encounters a Zeshabaliado, this is something comes into a person's hand, meaning he encounters it. Davar Sha'avarbo, the thing that he sinned with, okay? The Efshar Biado Lasos, and it's possible to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mirage, and he separates from it. Good. The low of Samus may on Tuba, and he doesn't do it because of his turning. Yeah. Low mirror, the low me soul cough. It's not out of fear, and it's not from a stumbling block of spring. Uh, so this is uh, interesting. 
I never noticed that the shorish is related. You're saying michshol, yeah. right? So this is a mi kishlon koach. I, I don't know oh. what the etymology is. So kishlon is uh, like a weakness uh, or lack of power. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's a similar thing. Okay, so pause here for one second here, right? So give me an example, make up your own example of what would be tshuva gemurah according to this and what would not be tshuva gemurah. Like just a, uh, make up a, a specific example. Well, okay, if you have a hard time eating some food, and your friend offers you a sandwich and you do take it because even though you're trying to eat Wait, sorry, you have a hard time eating kosher food? Yeah. So your friend offers meaning, you meaning, a sandwich. Meaning that you... You, you, desire desire to eat non you non want to eat non-kosher food, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. Because there's no like mitzvah, thou shalt eat kosher food. It's, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kosher. Right. So you struggle with keeping kosher? Yeah. Oh, and then, okay, go ahead, yeah. So your friend offers you a ham sandwich and if you do take it, then you're not really doing tshuva. If you don't take it, you are doing shuvah because you were just given the opportunity to do the sin again and you chose not. Okay, good. Now let's subdivide with the same division he makes here. So what would not be chuva? What would be a case where you didn't eat the ham sandwich, but it would not be chuva gemura? Because everyone's judging you that you did chuva and then you can't eat it anymore. Ah, oh, right. So okay. let's say the reason why you don't eat it is because everyone's judging you and you don't want to feel like a hypocrite, right? Yeah. Or what would be another reason? It's moldy, right? Or like you're full and you're not hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Or you became a vegetarian, right? So those would be, those would be uh, chuva, but just not chuva gamura. Chuva gamura is when you refrain from doing it because of your chuva. Okay. Now he gives an example. Okay, go ahead. Um, Behold, something that comes upon a woman that is in a marriage. Right, so this is talking about a guy, right? So he had prohibited intercourse with a woman. Oh. Okay. Um, and after the time that he slept with her, who only... Oh, so, and later on, nisyachid ima. He, he had yichud with her, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. Right, did you guys do yichud with Mrs. Yeah. H. Fader? Yeah, okay, right, so he had yichud with her. Who so I guess he's not doing chuva on that, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, maybe it wasn't on purpose, right? She she like trapped him. Uh, you just yeah, the door. yeah, right. Uh, uh, pull the plug in the elevator, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who only Bahavato and he stood with his love of her and with his strength of her body. Uh, gufo. His body. His body, right? So he still is in love with her and he still has the ability, the bodily ability, to do the same avera. Right. Uh, that he avar in this context means transgressed. transgressed yeah, in the, in the same city he transgressed in. Good. This is a man who did indeed. Good. Yeah, and we'll just call it a baal shuvah gemara, even though your your translation is accurate. Who shlomo omer. He who, he that Shlomo said. Yeah, this is what Shlomo said. Okay. And remember the, remember your creation in the days of your. Yeah, Bor Echa is uh, Bore Shelcha. Your creator. Your creator, right, in the days of your youth. Yeah, and that's from Kohalas. Okay. So, so we got so far here the definition of chuva gemura, right? So, is you're in the exact same situation with the same ability and the same desire, and by exact same situation, even down to like what details? The location, right? The place where it happened, and you separate from it not because of any side motivation, but because of the chuva process itself. That's like the ideal state of chuva. So the chuva process itself is, but isn't that alter your motive? Like you want to do. No, ulterior is a motive other than the thing itself. So okay. if you're separating because of the chuva that you went through, then that is, you know. How do you know if you're, 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 you're really doing it because you want to, you did chuva. You're not, not going to do it again because you, like, how do you know? Good question. How do you know? Well, I don't exactly understand. Like, you're not, how do you know that your mind's not tricking you? You're saying, oh, I'm doing, I'm not going to do it because I did chuva. Maybe you're thinking about other people. You're thinking about something else. You get to look right. back on it. You don't Ah, uh, okay. I feel like you do know, though. You kind of know, like deep down, maybe. You I think both are true. Well. I was gonna say, I, th I also think both are true, right? I think that that on the one hand, uh, Elishev is correct that you can tell in yourself sometimes like, that like what your real motives are, but I also think sometimes you can fake yourself out, and there's no way to know for sure. Right, practice the action either way, and 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 truthfully, who like who is ultimately. Um, 
I mean, who's going to be the judge of whether you did tshuva gemurah or not? Is Hashem, right? So, and it doesn't matter in terms of your tshuva because both the guy who didn't eat the sandwich because of the uh, the mold and the guy who didn't eat the sandwich because of the tshuva, they're still not eating the ham sandwich. So, in terms of their tshuva, it still is tshuva, but just one is a higher level than the other. Okay. Um, what's weird about the puzzle key uh, quotes here to it prove this? Like With yeah, right. In fact. What's not mentioned in the Pasuk? Tshuva, right? It says, instead, remember your creator, okay? This is something I, I had uh, set aside, I flagged to think about on my own, but, uh, but maybe we could discuss it now really quickly, is that uh, this was also in the Ramam that I gave you for the This Is Water, uh, when he was describing what the shofar is saying. Uh, it says, um, uh, flip to page uh, 149. Uh, halacha Dalid on the right column. Uh, this is the halacha that I gave you um, uh, for the shofar thing. I will just read it again. Even though the sounding of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah is a scriptural decree, meaning it's one of the chukim, rem is yeshbo, there's an allusion in it. Oh, we did use the word allusion even in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Um, klomar, as if to say, Uru, uru, yeshini, mishinaschem, v'hakitsu, nir, dami, mitar, damaschem. Wake up, wake up, you sleepers from your sleep, and uh, arise, you deep sleepers from your deep sleep. V'chapsu b'maseichem, v'chizru b'tshuva. Analyze your actions, return to tshuva, v'zichru b'ra'achem. And remember your creator, right? Elu ha-shochachim esa emes b'hav le'azman. These are people who forget reality in the, remember Hevel? The nothingness of the times. V'shogim kol shanasem b'hevel v'rik asher lo yo'il v'lo yatil. And they spend their entire year immersed in in, empty, in nothingness and emptiness, which doesn't help and doesn't save. Look into your souls. Improve your ways and your actions. And each one of you should abandon your evil way and your thought that is not good. So here he also uses the phrase, remember your creator. Okay, so the question is, this is a side question, but it's on topic. So I guess it's not a side question. Uh, it's a smaller question. It's a minor question. How is tshuva... How is the phrase, remember your creator, synonymous with tshuva? What would you say? I think specifically tshuva gemurah, because when you talk about that, you're doing it for the sake of the tshuva itself. Ah, interesting. Oh. The tshuva itself is remembering the creator and his decrees and that you want to keep for us. Okay. So why is that limited then to tshuva gemura and not regular tshuva? Because regular tshuva, you don't have to have your creator in mind when you're doing it. Interesting. Because you're doing it for another sake. You're not doing it for the sake. Okay. Good theory. Uh, let's let me uh, let's put it to the test here. Okay, not not ultimate test. Um, if you wanted to find how the Ramam defines a mitzvah, like so, Sefer Mitzvahs is one place to look. What's another place to look? Maybe in the Torah. He unfortunately he never wrote a commentary on Torah. Oh, the Rambam, right. Yeah, yeah. In the Mishnah Torah, where would you look to find out how he formulates the mitzvah? Uh, good, uh, good, good intuition. Uh, you would look at the beginning of the section. Okay, so look at the top of this page that we're on in 147. So he says, Hilvos Shuva. He says, Mitzvah Sase Achas. Okay, you see on the top right of the column, there's one positive commandment here. V'hu shiyashuv hachote mecheto lifnei Hashem. That he, that the sinner returns from his sin before Hashem. Vias vada and confesses. Okay, so does that change your opinion at all? Leah? Mm, I think this is, is this specifically talking about shuva as a whole or? Uh, this is talking about shuva, this is the basic mitzvah. I guess it doesn't because he's still returning to God to atone for his sin. Either way. Right. I, I think either way, in other words, the Ram puts the Lifnei Hashem part into the basic formulation of the mitzvah, which seems to imply that doing this before Hashem, like having Hashem in mind in this process yeah. is part of the basic mitzvah, not just Tshuva Gemura. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And I think also you could even get it from the Puzzle and Kohalas itself. When it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth, that implies as opposed to what? When you're like when you bless free will and right as opposed to remembering your creator in the days of your old age right. which implies that even then shiva would still be remembering your creator right. yeah so now we got so i think that was a good a good uh attempted answer but now we got to go back so how is all shiva described as remembering your creator 
Me? Yeah, Leah, can I repeat what you what I thought you said? Leah said that Chuva so my question was how is Chuva equal to remembering your creator? Leah had a different reading, which is it's not all Chuva, it's specifically Chuva Gamura is remembering your creator because only Chuva Gamura are you doing it because of God. And and, and not Chuva Gamura, you're doing it for other reasons that don't necessarily have to do with God. Is because of the reason, yeah. So I thought that the conceptually was a good answer, but I think it doesn't fit into the Ramam's formulation because he mentions uh, God in other cases. And then in the Pasuk, this implies that if you did Chuva in old age, it would still be considered remembering your creator, uh, that, which is why I say remember creator in your youth. If, if it was the way Leia would say it, it would just be remember your creator, period, and we would infer well, I youth. guess you can add on to that. About youth, about why. I don't know if the Ramam will elaborate on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're right about the way you read the youth because later on, you it's less out of free will, right? Like yeah. you're, you know, like in the guy case with the Avera, like if he's an old man who's like, you know, uh, on crutches, he's not going to be able to like chase after this woman, you know? Right. Shouldn't people be trying to like, even more so for themselves, not for Hashem? So it's it's a good question. So he he has not used the t phrase for Hashem. Leia used that phrase, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. He says mipnei hatshuva. Right. So if I think that's consistent with what you're saying, because who's Chuva ultimately for? It's for yourself. Right. So I, I think Chuva Gomorrah is for yourself, but it's for yourself in terms of the your return. You're your refraining from doing the sin because you see that the sin would actually be bad for you and that keeping your Chuva is good for you, as opposed to, let's say, like worrying about social opinion or like lacking the ability. So I think you're right, Emily, is that it is for yourself. Yeah, sure. Maybe like for Hashem means that like no other human being will know that you're doing this. Like even yourself. Well, I guess like sometimes yourself, but sometimes you don't even know like that you're doing it. Like in mitzvahs where no one else could see your actions. Yeah. Like I forgot what exactly, but it says like fear Hashem. Right. So that type of thing where like only Hashem will actually know. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Um, so are you answering the, are, are you explaining why it says Lifnei Hashem, or are you explaining why it says remember Hashem and that's synonymous with Chuva? I just didn't hear which question you're answering. I guess directly the first one. Yeah. And maybe indirectly the second one. Okay. But it says remember. Yeah, it says remember. It's different than, right, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so let me just repeat what you're saying first, then I'll call on Elie So you're saying that when it describes the tshuva process as being lifnei Hashem, it's because ultimately only Hashem really can see the reality of your tshuva, whether you whether uh, whether it was complete or genuine or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eli Shava. Well, I was kind of thinking like the youth, they kind of just do what's natural to them. So yeah. Maybe it's saying like do tshuva in a way that's like natural, like it like becomes your new habit. Okay. Which is kind of similar to like the atomic habit stuff. Yeah. You just do it in a way that it becomes your habit. Like when you're youth, you kind of just do what naturally comes to you. So like make this issue was so ingrained in you that you just do it. Okay, that, that's a good shot. Uh, okay, that's a good shot. So are, are you attempting to answer the remember your creator question or are you focusing just on the youth thing? I think it's both. Yeah, because I that's where I thought you were going with remember your creator. That when you think uh when you think of see okay, let me this is gonna be a weird question I'm gonna ask. When you think of chuva. If you had to pick a name of God or a description of God to pair with Chuva, what description of God would you choose? Merciful. Right. Um, Merciful or like, I don't know, I would think maybe like no saying hot Torah, right? The one who gave the Torah, because that's what you're doing Chuva for is violating the Torah. Right. So the question is, why are we going all the way back to the framework of God as creator? And I think Elisheva's answer kind of, you know, uh, sheds light on that, which is that you're trying, in other words, God created you in a certain way with a certain nature, okay? And ideally, you know, and, and keeping living life of mitzvahs is in line with that nature. And living, uh, doing averos is really truthfully deviating from that nature. So when you do tshuva, you should really be striving to realize that I'm returning to the way that my creator made me and the measure of that is, I mean, not the measure of that, but I guess like the ideal of that would be that it would be as natural to you as like, you know, anything else that comes by nature, like an animal, uh, you know, doing like a cow doing cow stuff, you know, but for you, like a human doing human stuff is like mitzvahs.
Yeah. See, I thought you were going to go in the opposite direction. You were going to say, when you're young, you don't do things out of, like, yourself. Or, like, it's hard for you to do things on your own. And that's all you have to remember your creator because you're not even doing it for your own sake. That sounds like a, yeah, that sounds like a different idea, but I, 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 hear, uh, yeah. I hear what you're saying. All right, let's do this because we only have five minutes. Let's have our initial reading. Oh, sorry, we, I, I didn't realize we stopped midway through the halacha. Um, uh, let's read this and then the next halacha and then think about it and then revisit it tomorrow. So if, I'm gonna re, I'll just read just uh, for the sake of time. Vim lo shav nuso. If he only did chuva in his old age, uh, and at a time when it would be impossible for him to do what he did, meaning when he can't do the Avera anymore. Um, even though it's not a superb tshuva, mo'elas hilo is beneficial for him. So in your own words, what is he saying here? Exactly, right? It's, it's not the best tshuva, but it still counts. Okay. It's still not tshuva gemura, right? So this is his first halakha where he defines tshuva gemura. Now he goes and defines what is tshuva, okay? And this is what we're going to, uh, oh, sorry. Keep on thinking that at the end of the halakha. Okay, more. Afilo avar koyamav, even if he transgressed his entire life. Vaasa tshuva biyom misaso, and he did tshuva on the day of his death, right? On his deathbed. Umes b'tshuvaso, and he died in his tshuva. Kol avanosav nimchalin, all of his, uh, his iniquities or his sins are forgiven. Shnemar, as it says, ad asher lo techshach hashemesh. As long as it's before the sun darkens, and that's from that same Pasuk in Kohalas, or the same uh, Perak, Shuhu Yom Hamisa, that's the day of death. Michlal, Shim Zachar Boro'o, Vishav Kodem Shiamus, this implies that if he remembered his creator and did Shiva before he died, Nislachlo, then he's forgiven. Which is why Chazal say, when should you, when should you do Shiva? Every, right, they say, do Shiva one day before your death, but then practically speaking, that means every day because you don't know when you're going to die. Yeah. Okay. So now let us, actually, you know what, I, I, let's, uh, no, no, no. There's more. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but that, that's, for the, that's actually for the second halakha. Uh, you know what, let's actually uh, stop this for today. I think I'd rather stop this for today than start it and uh, rush through it, okay? All right, so let's. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. You made us read the, the, only the English and then 